evening YouTube, my name's uh, Rob Pollard and this is uh, part 2 of um, uh, my coverage of Vital VR. Uh, now for this particular uh, recording I'm going to show you how to use uh, some of the weapon systems. I need to know how to take off or land, uh, please refer to my uh, previous uh, video. Alright, let's get going. Go for the AV 42C again. Now, if you want to learn how to use the weapon systems, you're better off going uh, for a quick flight and then select climbing target practice. Now, these are non aggressive, so you can take your time uh, trying to get this right. So let's go for it. Is our mission beacon. Okay. Let's see one in the ready room. Alright, let's go for it. Alright, now the uh, weapons I'm going to show off, I think, are pretty much armed. We've got Hellfires on that wing there. And we've got uh, sidewinders and outer pylons. I've got some uh, ultra modern missile there, I don't know what that is. That's a uh, E3, uh, oh, it's Custa bomb effectively. I'll show you how to use all of these. And of course, we've got a cannon. So let's get this thing in the air. On with the helmet. Here we go. Here we are on the carrier again. Once again, it just looks huge. You never quite get used to the sheer scale of it. Now, in my previous video, um, I actually had uh, I actually crashed my plane whilst on the deck while seemingly doing nothing. But having reviewed the video footage, what actually happened was I didn't have my brake on, and the plane actually rode off backwards off the. Um, like a carrier, so tip of the day, if you're going to be hanging around on the carrier for any length of time, make sure your brakes are on. Right, let's get this uh, beast started up. So, on with the main battery, and on with the APU. And we're going to pop the engines on. Uh, oh, this one's got a bit fiddly, there we go. Right, so right now all our engines are on, let's put on the HUD first point. And uh, turn on the water displays, ambidextrous. Right now, uh, if we're going to be doing weapons, again I'll, I'll use the left hand display in uh, navigation mode, we're going to see where we're going, there's our objectives there. I think we've got some air objectives here. And, uh, I recommend having your uh, target cam in the middle. Uh, now there's nothing armed at the moment, so don't worry about that just yet. And objectives on the, uh, on the right hand one. Alright, we're almost ready to go. Uh, now I can say, as I mentioned in the previous lesson, I've configured by HUD so it's showing uh, knots and feet. You can do that under the options menu. Now, uh, to use your weapons, what you need to do is arm them. And you've got this master arm button here. So let's flip that on to arm. I think I've got a hand on this, or have I? There's a definite way of doing this. So, right, so master arm is on. Without the master arm being on, then your weapon's going to work. Now with it on, you can immediately see the cannon reticle in the middle. That's that circular part there. And you'll see that moving around. Now, uh, for those that missed uh, my first lesson, uh, we're going to do a vertical takeoff, and the trick to doing this is to push your throttle forward slightly. Uh, before we go any further, I'd like to point out that the buttons you see on the virtual um, controls here, they actually map very well to um, uh, your actual controllers. And you find that uh, these four buttons here uh, reflect uh, uh, this touch uh, pad here. And these up and, up and down buttons here reflect the touchpad here. 
So you, you kind of get given a clue what's what. So we'll show you what they all do anyway. So, and you'll grab onto the controls. As I mentioned before, I recommend looming it on your knee. And again, checking the box, uh, bottom right, to make sure you're centre, as you can tell. If I push myself way off centre, you can see I've gone way off centre. Let's move that back. Right, let's grab the uh, throttle. So you push the stick forward slightly and then start pulling in the power very slowly. There we go. Should. Take off and go. That's the smoothest way I've worked out of getting this bird off the ground. Um, so you really do get a great sense of height in this. So uh, if you're afraid of heights, this might not be the simulation for you. Let's get a little height. Now, uh, as we mentioned before, that circle of it at the bottom is our hover marker and it's showing us hovering and moving forwards. What I'm going to do now, perhaps let's put our landing gear up, let's forget that. Landing gear is now up. Now, I am really, really bad at, um, <laughs> at uh, hovering, so this might end up really disastrously. How is that? Uh, I can't. Are we going to stabilise? I think we've just about stabilised it. Right, let's get a hand on the throttle. Let's tilt our engines forwards. We're going to stall. But we can, whenever you're going to stall, just point your aircraft downwards to build up speed. Cutting up to get out of a stall is a really bad move, so always point your aircraft nose downwards to get some speed and then we can pull up. Nice and easy. Right, now, I recommend going for maximum speed but without afterburner. You can see the afterburner dial there. This particular aircraft, it's really a transport aircraft and it handles pretty badly. So um, for weapons, we'll firstly go for air to air. Uh, and to select your weapons, you use the, uh, the top button on your controller here. So if I press that now, we can cycle through them all. So what we're going to do is uh, arm the AIM-9s, which are otherwise known as the Sidewinder Missiles. Now, I've noticed with these, they tend to um, effectively, um, I guess like the real life ones, the heat seeker automatically locks on to any aircraft that are nearby. You can hear it as a growling at your piece. So let's uh, fly towards an aircraft. see he's actually transmitting at us, yeah, that's very similar to the F-16. There we go, there they are up there, so, firing at it, it's very, very simple. Let's remove ourselves so we end up behind it. We're going to track that one up there. I let him fly by, and then we're going to kind of uh, sneak in behind if he'll let us. Now those are fighters, so they're obviously a lot more manoeuvrable. There we go, so he's turned tail on me, we follow him behind him. To fire, you just use the trigger. We're waiting till we hear the, uh, the lock on tone. I think we're a little bit far away at the moment. There we go, and fire. And that hopefully should hit. Let's track it around. That was quite a long shot. Not seeing a hit. No, there's an explosion over there. Let's get in a bit closer. And you, you're trying to listen out for the tone. Don't try to go for a front shot. Try aim for a rear shot. There's really jostling chaff there. His chaff as well. Okay, if they're going to use a lot of chaff, it's best to go to guns. Let's try and do it in the old fashioned way. I'm going to get the uh, smaller reticle over it like that and short bursts like that. See how I fit in that? It's going down. And you, you need short bursts because you don't have much in the way of ammunition. It's the same with all modern fighter aircraft. So nice short bursts. Now, one thing 
a podink over there. Your gun reticle has a thick line running around the outside of it. That represents your ranged target. And ideally, you want that uh, to be at least uh, filling up half a circle. If it's filling up more than half a circle, you're probably too far away. So let's try and lock up this one up here. And this thing doesn't handle too well. How are we doing? You have to get in pretty close to get a lock on. It's worth trying a sidewinder again. There's a lock tone. Fire. I think that's too far away, but we'll see. Now, there are friendlies in the area, as you can see one map there, that blue one there, so make sure you don't shoot down the wrong thing. This will certainly put, there we go, that hit. That's a good hit. Is he going down now? No, I might need to fire another one. Let's get a bit closer. I can hear a partial lock. You're, you're listening out for that high pitch uh, tone. That's a hit as well. Yeah, he's definitely going down. That's the one thing with VR as well. Because you see the real one-to-one -one scale of things, uh, that, that aircraft and these smoke trails are really, really huge. It's not something you really notice on a TV screen. So, right, uh, he's on his way down. Looking at the map, we've got one more target, and we'll do him with uh, uh, cannons, basically. So, again, the top button on your uh, right-hand uh, stick switch to you've got cannon which is your GAU-8 let's find our last aircraft which is over here on this way we're there we need to get to there now pay particular attention to the thick circle around the reticle because that indicates range to target at the moment we're uh, way above maximum range but can we see him we know he's in front of us somewhere See him? No, can't see him yet. Oh, there he is. I've got an eyeball on him, just up there. So again, you, you want to get the reticle so it's on the plane. Now we haven't locked on yet, so it's pointless firing here. It's not going to take lead into account. So here we go. We're now locked. Now what we're going to do is pull the circle over the aircraft. Now we're going to stalk, so not a very fast aircraft, so that's good by. Notice the range that the thick part of the circle had gone all the way down. So let's go again. See we're down to about a quarter of a circle, so we're in pretty good range there. We want to try and keep your plane nice and steady, and then go for the short burst. That's not going to miss. Let's try again. A nice short burst. It's like on an F-16, you, you get literally seconds worth of uh, rounds, so you really need to look after them. Let's get in a bit closer. About right there, I reckon. Nice short burst. Got him. Got him again. I notice that the thick part of the range ring is now about, what, a quarter? So we're nice and close. That's what you want. And there we go, he's gone down. Lost lock. So, so air to air is reasonably easy in that the uh, the systems do automatically lock on for you. Now, air to ground is a little bit different in that you've got to manually lock your systems on. So I'll do one. Um, They're hellfires. I can never remember the actual designations. Let's go with it. So we're using AGM uh, uh, 114s. In fact, I should be able to tell by how many I'm carrying. Let's have a look. Yeah, 
Yeah, so the AGM 114s are the Hellfires. Right, what we're going to do, we know there are ground targets up on the mountain, and we know there's some by the city. So what we need to do is lock it up. And the way you do it, um, it uses a, a TV in the front of its nose, so you need to switch on power to the camera. So to go back again, if we go to home, so you need to select target cam, and you need to power it on. It defaults to straight ahead. You can tell that by the square reticle at the front there. You can actually move that around by using your right hand touchpad. See? Moving it left, right, and so forth. Don't take any notice of the tone because you're not actually going to hit anything right now. What I tend to do there is I'll, I'll get it to point forwards again. Right now, what we need to do is place that over an enemy vehicle or target. So that's Turn her in. It's a plane up there. If you look at your radar, it's blue, so don't shoot at it. It's friendly. Alright, here we go. Now, the actual site, when you move it around, it is ground stabilised. So, wherever you leave it on the ground, it's going to stay there. So, let's try that. Seems to be a bit faster than I remember it. Let's go for a zoom in. You can actually zoom in to see uh, what you're looking at a bit better. There is even a cam that comes down in front of your helmet. I find it very disorientating to you, so I turn that off. Alright, where are we? Ah, oh, we're on the wrong side of this mountain. So let's again put our sight back in the directly ahead by pressing forward. They're just down there over that mountain, so I do a big sweep round. For this scenario, the enemy are in quite hard to reach places. Oh, do it. Yeah, they'll be just down there. I think you just won't make them out. So let's flip around. Now, you probably won't get this on target the first time. Don't worry. We'll get it roughly where we need to get it. And then we'll make a, another pass and we'll keep refining our target until we get a hit. So this thing handles a bit like a pig. So you need to be careful. Alright, so let's try and move our sights. There we are, and it, it does tend to lock on automatically if we zoom in. See, we've locked on there. We should be able to fire. Whoosh! If you watch the target here, or up there, we should get a hit. Bang! Gone. We'll take a nice closer look. So it's as easy as that. And again, to make sure that you uh, you could hit uh, forward to lose the target, but we know that there are many other targets near that one, so you're actually better off leaving uh, the uh, target marker exactly where it is. It's saying gimbal limit because it's behind us and we can't shoot at it, but we'll sort that out when we turn our plane round. Uh, that vertical bar on the right is the missile's range. The top half of the bar is maximum range. The bottom solid half of the bar is um, uh, the, the best range to shoot at, so try and get it in the bottom half. Once it goes over the top of the bar, you're out of range, so we're out of range now. So that's your range bar. You can see the uh, little sideways arrow you know, way above range, so that's not a problem. And now when we turn our plane around, we should find that the target is still over the destroyed vehicle, but we know there are other vehicles nearby, so we can tweak the target. So this thing doesn't handle very well, it loses a lot of height. Right, so we're back there. Let's get a bit of zoom if we can. Uh, the buildings are in the way. This is going to be interesting. I think there's a vehicle there. If we can just slide over. There we go. And notice how the target's automatically locked. Now we're, we're in range, but we're in a kind of range where we could miss. You're better off waiting for the, uh, the arrow to go into the solid area. So if you look... Uh, top right at the vertical part, watch the carrot slide down, and there it is, we're now in range, and fire. Hang on, we've got to get the buzz, and fire. Uh, and to get it, the tone to go, I had to point the circle over the square. That should hit, he says. Bang, gone. So it is pretty easy. Like I say, the big difference between um, 
air to surface and air to air is that you have to manually designate your targets and again tip of the day is if you've got lots of targets in one area don't reset your tracking leave it where it is and that way you can refine it by moving it slightly onto the next target which we'll do once more I've got two missiles left so it says we've got two there our range is increasing our gimbal limit which means we can't slew it round until we, we turn our plane round to face the target So I'll do one more missile shot, and then we'll try some uh, uh, using the guns at ground targets. If we can. So here we go. See the flames from the previous hits. Right, so it's back to this camera, and what we want to do again: slow it round till we find something of interest. And note it's automatically locked on once I move it over the area and again to take the shot you place your circle over the square to get the tone like that and fire and that should hit as well and notice that it says IFF foe so it's identified it as the enemy cool. so obviously in a um, full campaign game you want to check your IFF because you don't want to accidentally shoot friendly forces the problem with ground targets is they all look very similar from the air. Right, let's have a go at um, some gunfire at a ground target. So again, the top button on this stick. Uh, the, the biggest issue with strafing is, I guess, target fixation and then hitting the ground. So you, you want to try not to do that, obviously. and. I prefer to strafe from a relatively high angle, but it doesn't always work out that way. I also like to try and get a lock. Now I have actually reset my sight to forward, which I shouldn't really have done. It's going to make my job a little bit harder. Now, locking up the target has the advantage that it, it gives you a clue where to aim. So if we zoom out a bit to give us a bit more speed and zoom in. What have we got? So I think there's one there. Anything there? Oh, we can refine this. It's kind of stopped. I'm not seeing anything, is right? There's one. Right, so you can see that it's there. Now, I'm not going to shoot at it this time because we're too close and I'd probably hit that building just down there. But we know where he is, we've marked him with a square marker. Uh, and by doing that, it makes it a lot easier um, to set up our strafing run. Because some of these um, ground vehicles are so small that setting up a strafing run without locking them up can be quite difficult because you only get to see them at the last minute. Whereas by having it locked up, I get to see that square reticle which tells me where he is. So let's we'll fly over this hill here and then we'll fly down. So there we go, pop up. So this thing's very slow. Tilt around. And we'll probably get a store warning. Yeah, really doesn't like this kind of behaviour. We'll just drop a bit to hit the hill. Right now we should see our square telling us where our target is. There it is. And it's a case of putting the cannon marker over it. <coughs> now I just it, it should wind down just like that to where to say how far you are. Yes, there you go, you can see the range winding down. Again, I like to wait till I'm reasonably close, you don't have a lot of cannon rounds, about halfway. And then again, short, sharp pass. Aim at the cross. I got it. Oh no, we missed it. The hill was in the way. Damn! <laughs> that would teach me to uh, fixate on the actual cross rather than what I've seen. Let's do one more pass. <coughs> So uh, apologies for my uh, for the sound quality. Firstly, this is with the Vive mic, and second, I got a bit of a, a sore throat. <coughs> right, let's go for it. I can have the buildings in the way on in this direction, but we might be able to get at him. Check how low I am because this thing is stalling. Landing gear. Landing gear's up. 
Alice is thinking I'm so slow that I should be, I should have it down. Alright. Now we're not going to fly into this mountain. Let's go fly around it. Alright. Can we see him? Let's see if we can quickly this a really uh, hard run to do. And shot burst. Oh. Yeah. So strafing's really, really difficult. Even when you have a good uh, line of sight on it. If I come over these hills, we should have a direct run, in theory. Again, VR, you really get a great sense of scale and how high you are. It's really adds to the fun. Right, let's turn this thing around. There's one of the crash planes down there. You want to be up there. Come on, don't stall on me. A little bit of power. I don't want to crash into the hill, that'd be bad. Right, there we go. Now we should have a much more direct run now. Landing gear. Alright, here we go. Okay, I want to try and keep the plane steady. I'm going to go for a long range shots here. So I'm desperate to get this. Don't hit the hill, because that's bad. Got him. There you go. Finally. So yeah, strafing can be a bit harder, but again, if you concentrate nice, short, sharp shots, make sure you lock it up first, because that helps you uh, see where they are, even if you can't see them visually. So uh, that's what I did for weapons coverage. Uh, main things to remember, make sure your master arm is on, because if that isn't on, you're not firing anything. Uh, air to air weapons, they automatically lock on, you just point your plane to, towards one of the enemy planes, wait for the turn and just fire. Uh, it's the same with the um, air to air guns, just fly towards them until you see the lock on and then shoot. Air to ground, the big difference is you must manually target, and you do that again, let's show you again. You pick the target button on the home screen and then from there you need to switch power on and that switches on the, uh, on the camera and the weapon. And then it's a case of using your uh, right hand touchpad to move that up and down and it, its speed depends on what kind of zoom you've got. So I think if you're massively zoomed out it whizzes around really quick like that and if you're massively zoomed in it's a little bit slower, obviously just take into account that you're zoomed in. And it is ground stabilised, so once you put it down somewhere, if you fly off, it will stay at that precise point always, and remember it's just a really handy reference. And again, to fire your missile, you just put the circle over the square, wait for the tone, and fire, and that's it. So that's uh, pretty much everything I, I wanted uh, to cover. Uh, thank you for watching. Uh, bye.